our uh, our previous presenter ended a few minutes early, so we've had a had a break here for a few minutes. Um, so if you're ready and want to start a few minutes early, you're sure. welcome to. Sure. Okay. Let me know. All right. Hold on just a second. Let me finish getting set up. <coughs> All right. I'm going to start recording, and uh, you can go ahead and start now. Welcome, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Let me see if I can find the chat first. Oh, I don't know where the chat is. I was going to look for... <laughs> Oh, it's in the, uh, yeah, if you see the zoom in. Okay, oh, you found let me it? move it to the side here because I was going to, in case there's questions. Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing today? My name is Melissa Armo. And interesting day to trade. Markets pushing back today. While I'm talking today, guess what? The Fed is going to talk at 2 o'clock. I'll be done right before then, but we could have some volatility and movement in the market. So let's talk about trading let's talk about making money that's the reason that we trade even though it's fun to press a button it's really a lot more fun to make money so we're going to focus today on one system to make money trading specifically gaps that is a system that i trade if you have questions after today you can email me at melissa at the stock or call me at 929 gap you can also follow me on twitter facebook youtube or skype by appear on tv um, I'm on every Thursday, Real America's Voice, talking about markets and politics. And I usually put the times of my hits on Twitter, so you can follow me there. And we're going to talk about the market today, and we're going to talk about gaps. And we're going to even, I'm even going to show you a trade here that I called today. So we're getting into the period here of the fall period. In fact, today's the first day of fall. Um, doesn't feel like fall yet here in New York. It's a little too warm. I still have the air conditioning on, but fall is on its way. Winter is probably going to be here before we know it. And I think someone said in the trading room today, there's 100 days left in 2021. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's correct. I'm going to count it tonight, but that is crazy. So ask yourself, while we're sitting here thinking about what we can accomplish between now and 2022, are you on track for your finances for 2021? Are you on track to make the money that you wanted to make this year, specifically trading? And you know, you can ask yourself in general if you're making the money you wanna make this year, no matter what you're doing. Some people are working full-time and they're trading full-time and they want to trade full-time, but they don't know how to make the transition. I think the nice thing about trading gaps, which again, I'm gonna talk about today, that's my strategy, is they set up very early in the morning. So depending on where you live in the world, you can block out just a half an hour of the day to trade my strategy. You could do it in the morning, you could do it on your lunch period, but it's between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time is the time that I focus on trading. So it is time to turn your year around. If you're losing money for the year 2021 in the market, you still have plenty of time left, plenty of opportunities. You've got October, November, December, and again, earnings season begins in October, which is typically a very busy time to trade, a very profitable time to trade. We have we did an earnings trade today, which was uh, FedEx, FDX, that gap down today. Actually, the earnings were last night. And there's a couple big earnings Thursday night that I'm going to be watching into Friday morning. Costco is out Thursday night. That could have a big move too. Okay, so there's plenty of opportunities to turn your year around if you're not doing well this year trading. And I always tell people, don't worry if you have a small account, because if you know what to do, that's all that matters. <laughs> it's really earning power. Knowing how to earn money, that's what counts. You know, if you take a good trade and you make a lot of money and you don't know what you did or how to replicate it, how are you ever gonna do that? You could spend all of the profits that you made on that one good trade and lose and consequently lose even more if you don't know what you did. So having the right knowledge and knowing what to do, having the right strategy, the one focus, one strategy, really will help you be able to replicate whatever money you wanna make in the market consistently, because that's the key. This does not mean that every trade I take works. Some trades I take lose. You have to account for that and that's why you stops. But at the end of the day, the knowledge, the knowledge helps you and something called conviction, which we're gonna talk about too. So I use one system to trade the market, and if I have one tip of the day to give you today, that you can take away from this lecture here, it is to focus on one thing at a time. 
In fact, I even usually focus on one stock at a time, one trade at a time. And I think it's important to have a good mentor. Now, you know, while you don't necessarily need a mentor, I think it's extremely helpful. Even if you've been trading for a long, long time, I'm really good at what I do. I'm an expert at what I do. So if you come to me, you do my class, you're new, having my outlook on things, the market stocks, whatever we're doing, really will help you get the conviction and the confidence to take risk and then obviously trade. So let's talk about what is a gap. I said that I do gaps, I focus on gaps, I focus on one pick a day. We actually did puts in Facebook on Monday, did two puts in Facebook on Monday, and I called another put in Facebook today. So let's talk about, first of all, what is a gap? Uh, Facebook gap down today, right here. So this was yesterday, Tuesday, today is Wednesday. What is a gap? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. So Facebook closed last night here, right roughly around 357 and change open in the morning boom it opened down a lot around 347.50 and change okay so what did facebook do then it fell in fact it's falling right now so anyways this was a short you could have shorted it as a day trade or you could have done a put so this morning at 10 13 in the morning i called the 340 puts out for next friday in facebook they're working okay now, how did I know that Facebook was going to continue to drop? Because I'm reading the buying and or selling, in this case of Facebook, this is a short, so where I'm looking at selling action, that I'm predicting that it's going to sell off and continue to sell off on the daily chart. This is the daily chart of Facebook. And again, I'm predicting it based on what? Based on the gap. Now, I was saying Monday we did it too. Let's go back and look at Monday's gap. This was Friday, this was Monday. Stock closed here on Friday, boom. Closed right here around 365, fell. Open where? Lower, under 360, and then fell. So we did puts in this on Monday. You could have also day traded this Monday too, okay? Again, this fell here, and then it fell even here, okay? This is from Monday, Actually, let's just go back to Friday. From Friday's close, again, around 365-ish, it was a little bit under it, to today, look how this thing has fallen, and today is not over yet, okay? That is a big drop for this stock, even for Facebook, which moves pretty big. It's a little bit pricey. That's why it, sometimes it makes sense to do these as options. It's a little bit cheaper if you have a small account. That's a big move, even for a stock like this, okay? So I get up in the morning, I look for gaps, and then I rank them and predict the direction that they're gonna go. That's all I do. And you can trade them as options like this. This is a newsletter that I have, or you can do the day trades. So having one strategy and one focus helps you, why? Because unless you're gonna accurately predict the market direction every single solitary day, which is hard to do, I'm good at it, but I don't get it right every day, then you're going to have difficulty finding consistent plays Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because most stocks on any given day go with the market. For example, today, a lot of things are rallying. Now, Facebook is not, but a lot of things are rallying today because the market gapped up today and it's pushing back. Again, I discussed earlier, we have a Fed me uh, meeting at two. We're going to have movement with that. The movement could make us drop. The movement could make us rally more. We'll find out in an hour, okay? But having one focus will help you to be consistently profitable and not to constantly be looking at the market gyrations, which we've had a lot of just in the last, I'd say, three days, four days, and expect that to continue into the fall period. So having one strategy is really all you need to be successful in the market. And again, you can trade one strategy, doing it as options, doing it as day trades, doing it as swing trades, whatever works for you. But it's the concept and idea of looking at one thing. Okay, then you can add the size to it. You do not need a general overall broad based view to make money. I know people think that while I discuss on TV about, for example, what Congress is doing with the $3.5 trillion stimulus plan, the government debt ceiling, the shutdown, all of these things, you know, you could always give a reason why we're dropping, why we're rallying, why we're following, do to do to do. In the end, all I look at really to make my decisions is the technicals the chart, the price action, because I want to make money right now today or tomorrow, you know, this week. 
So looking at the long term, again, what Congress is doing, the political backdrop of where we are right now in 2021, COVID, all these things, that may help you get conviction. But I do not make trading decisions based on that. I don't make trading decisions based on news or fundamentals or any of that stuff. It's too late. It's too long, too far ahead. We ain't got to make money right now to debt, okay? And any questions here, just plop it in the room. I do have the chat up on the other screen. <laughs> so getting back to what I was saying, if you can learn how to read price patterns, predicting where something's going to rally, to go long or fall to short, then you can make money, okay? And if your reason for trading is to make money, then the bottom line is that's all that matters. Someone's asking about putting your eggs in one basket. I don't put my whole account in one basket, if that's what you mean by your eggs. I'm talking about focusing on one trade, one stock pick at a time. If you have a $10,000 trading prop account, you wouldn't risk $10,000 in Facebook today. So that's what I think of when somebody says, put all your eggs in a basket or risk the farm. No, it's one thing at a time. Worst case scenario, say you risk $1,000 in a trade in Facebook today. What if it loses? Then you lose $1,000, then you have one loss. Then, then that's it. If you win, you win. Versus taking five trades. That's a good concept and a good question because a lot of people think they want to spread it out. I don't look at it like that. I look at it like I want high odds. I want high odds. It's like if you went to Atlantic City and you were like, okay, well, I'm going to play blackjack. I'm going to do roulette. I'm going to do craps. I'm going to do slots. I'm going to do this thing. Do, 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 do. No, why don't you just get good at one thing? Like I would be someone, again, I, I, I don't do this. I'm not, I'm, I really don't go to Atlantic City, even though I could. I probably would be a good person because I go with numbers to count cards. But the reality is, you know, if you want to make money in something, just be really, really good at that one thing. Spreading it out is really not the right concept. It's about the concept of excelling, getting really, really good. Like if you wanted to become an athlete, you wouldn't play football and baseball and tennis and golf and everything else. If you wanted to win in, you know, tennis, we're at the end of the tennis season now, U.S. Open just ended, you would have to focus on playing tennis. Do you understand? That would be your main focus if you wanted to win the U.S. Open, all right? And this is true in anything that you do in life if you want to get good. Uh, this idea of like spreading it out by doing a million different things, it doesn't serve you to ever, 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 ever really get good at one thing. And I've, I've completely made a living. I've been doing this now for 13 years. Uh, you know, I've been trading nothing but gaps. And I just do it in different ways. I do it in options. I do it in day trades. And I also have then something called what? Conviction. So we shorted the market on Monday. I called the market a fall yesterday too. How was I able to do that? having conviction. So having conviction is an important piece of trading that many traders lack. Why? For two reasons. They don't know what to have conviction in, okay? And they lack a good strategy. And they, they want to do what Ajax just said. They want to spread it out. Well, then how do you have conviction in anything? You're like, well, I'm not sure about this, and I'm not sure about this, and I'm not sure about this one, so let me take three trades. That's kind of silly. That, again, that's court, sort of like gambling. You say, I'm all in in this one. And again, all in doesn't mean you're risking your whole account. It means you size yourself accordingly based on your account size, but it either wins or it loses. And if it loses, then you learn something from it, maybe. Not every trade works, though, even in a good system. And when traders lose in a system, guess what? They want to give up too quickly. This is a mistake as well. Anyone that trades the market has times where they have losing trades. Again, that's part of trading, too. So many traders are black and white, black and white. Live within the gray area. You're not going to have 100% winners. You wouldn't even with me. I, I'm short some things right now, and the market's pushing back. I think the shorts are going to work. But the reality is, I'll know by when, Friday at 4 o'clock. But I wanted a lot of trades on Monday, so it's neither here nor there, even if I lose in the rest of the options I'm in this week. I had some big trades on Monday when we dropped. But the fact is that any system, any system you do will have a percentage of trades that lose. So my win ratio is about 80%. So for every 10 trades I take, I expect two to be losers and eight to be winners. But I don't lose conviction if I take a trade that loses. If you want to trade and do well, you need a good system. And you need to have conviction in that system. And how well you got to understand it. 
While it does not mean that you will never lose, it does mean that you will win more than you lose. And guess what? That's all that matters. That will allow you also to put more risk on and take bigger risk in trades, hold trades and hold the conviction. Like I'm holding the, the puts that I'm in till Friday. Of course you need to know what to have conviction in, which is the information that I teach about gaps. So again, getting back to this thing, it's quality. It's not quantity. It's quality in order to make money. Now here was the uh, Monday day in the market. This is the QQQs. So what is a gap? Again, we're gonna go over it. Market closed here, gap down, boom. A gap is the difference between the close and the open. There are gap ups and gap downs. We happen to do the gap down on Monday. What is a gap up? When, a, when the market or a stock closes at one price and opens higher. So here's four o'clock, here's 9.30 in the morning, rally. We fell from Friday to Monday because the stock price moved down, or the Qs, which were here, dropped. Do I think that day trading is safer than what? Safer than what? I don't know what you mean by safe. Any trade that you take, you should risk yourself according to what you can afford. As long as you do that, you'll be safe. But any trade you take involves risk. So I'm not sure what you mean by day trading versus what? Swing trading, the difficulty that people have with swing trading is I never know when to get out. And that people can get burned with doing that and people can get burned if they're in the wrong direction and they also never know when to get out. If you're swing trading, you're just buying something and holding it or shorting something and holding it, what's your time frame to get out? You know, with day trades, I'm in and out quick, boom, ba -doom. I have to be out way before four o'clock and preferably the morning. While sometimes I will hold a trade like the market this week, I'm preferably out in the morning. People have a problem with swing trading because they never know when they're getting out. So that traders struggle with that. With options also, when do you get out? You get out when you're up. You get out when you're up. You get out when the momentum comes in when you're up because you have a fixed time frame in the option. So the reason that swing trading is difficult for traders is because they never know when they're getting out. That means when they're down or up, to be honest with you. So that's my, that's my two cents on that. Um, but as far as safeness, there's, there's neither here nor there for that. It's, it's about your risk. So you just should never risk more than you can afford to lose as far as anything you do, whether it's an option, whether it's a day trade or whether it's a swing trade. Okay, so let's talk about gaps. What makes them so profitable? They have big moves, like I showed you in the market. For me, they also have fast moves and large moves and therefore you can make a lot of money quickly in a gap. Why? Because you get the big move right away. And that helps. Facebook is another good example of that today. And when I say an option for a fast move, I mean 24 to 48 hours. When I say a day trade for a fast move, I mean 5, 10, 15 minutes, okay? So this was a fast move for the market on Monday. I consider that fast, okay? Fast whether you did the day trade or the option or both. Again, it was a short, that's quick. The idea of buying something and holding it and holding it and waiting, one, your money's tied up in the trade, and two, you can't get out with a profit until the move goes. So gaps create momentum and volatility, which makes the fast move, which makes it easier to make money and play on. Again, like the Facebook, and actually I was off last week, but you could have shorted Facebook, I'm seeing this here. You could have actually done this Friday too. Again, I didn't trade Friday, I was off, but you could have actually done this here too. You could have done this Friday too. Now that I'm seeing that here. But again, I, I, didn't, I didn't trade on Friday. So who makes gaps? Institutional money. The footprints of institutional money that come in and either sell the market or buy the market. What happened from Friday to Monday? Boom, we had a big sell off in the market. We had a dump, okay? It was institutional what? Institutional selling. So we fell and then we sold off all day into the close or into about three o'clock, 3.15ish. So I'm looking for institutional money to play with, which is, you know, volume. I'm not trading low float stocks or cheap penny stocks or any of that crap. I'm trading stocks and companies you know of, like you've heard of Facebook, okay? I'm trading things that move. I'm trading things that have big move. I'm trading things with volume that are traded by institutional money. They move stocks, like here's the FDX. So what happened with this? Again, this was last night. Stock closed here last night at four o'clock. I don't know where this exact close was, but it was maybe around 253-ish or so. Open in the morning, down, boom. It was around 235-ish. So again, this closed here, gap down, drop, boom, okay? So institutions sold their position in FedEx 
Last night into the earnings, it was after four o'clock. I do not trade the post market or the, the pre-market, but we looked at this today, okay? To do what? To short. So there was volatility. If you're following what's happening in, again, the institutional moves of something and the volatility that's going on, you have lots of opportunity to make money as an active trader. It doesn't matter how you do it, okay? The whole idea of swing trading is really to, to increase your portfolio and your investments long term. So that's not what I call active. Active is options on the weeklies or doing bi-weeklies. Active is day trading in and out quick, okay? We want to chunk it out, especially if you're gonna do this as something that what you're gonna do for income, okay? So if you're income trading, then you need to be active. You need to make your money work for you. So I'm looking for volatility, again in the gap, because that's how I get profit as a trader. Trading is making money with moves. It, it's not long-term investing. While I can use gaps to read long-term trends, market, any, any stock I see, that's not what I'm doing on a regular basis, day by day, week by week, okay? So it's important to know the difference and why you're doing this. So I'm looking for institutional money. And if you wanna do this for a career, then you have to get big moves because you're gonna have some trades that lose. So you have to have the winners be big enough that they win, get you ahead, and cover the losses, okay? I'm capturing those moves in a small time frame and a small period of time daily in the market on the one minute chart. Now here was the spy. Just like the Qs, just like Facebook, this gap down on Friday morning. I mean, uh, Monday morning. Well, actually gap Friday too. Uh, here was, let's go Thursday. Thursday closed here, gap down fell, boom. Then we closed on Friday, closed near the lows. This is the SPY, okay, the banks were in the SPY. Banks were up today, that's also why we're pushed back today, although there really wasn't any reason. We closed here, gap down, fell. So this was a pretty significant fall here. It was around 441-ish, and then we opened in the morning around 435-ish. This is Monday morning, boom. Again, you could have shorted this here as a put, or you could have just shorted this. Now, this is a little pricey, so you might have done this as an option. Options are a cheaper way to trade stocks because you don't have to have a margin account. You can have a cash account, all right? Whereas you would need margin for something like this at this price point. But institutional money sold off the market from Friday to Monday. Again, we can talk about the reasons, but it's neither here nor there. I get up in the morning, I look at the gap, and I rate the gap, and I say, wait a minute, this, is, this gap, is good, this gap is going to go where? Up or down? And in the case of the market, it fell, so we shorted it. A big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, and creates momentum and sets trend in charts. And that's what you want to play with, okay? You wanna play with the big money. I call it power money or institutional money. It's hedge funds, big banks, big, big traders that take big positions in the market. It's power. It's a lot of money that comes in. It's not you. It's not even an entire trading room with a lot of people. It's hundreds of thousands and millions of shares, okay, that, that are being dumped on a day like today in Facebook, for example. You want to be in the side of power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all time. And even if you think it's not, it is. And that's one of the reasons why I think you know, between today and Friday, it'll be really interesting to see the market direction and really where we go as far as who's in charge, the bulls, the bears. The market isn't an uptrend. That's absolutely true. But we had a big sell-off from Friday to Monday, and you can't deny it. So you want to learn how to read the footprints of big position players, and you the idea is to do it before the momentum occurs, not before the gap occurs, but you see the gap, and then you quickly get in as soon as you can in the morning. And if you can do that and get a great entry, then you can get out wherever you want. You can get out quick, you can hold it. Uh, and again, we're looking for momentum, but it's really institutional money. And so this is what I focus on. This is the only thing that I do. It's gaps. And again, this, is, this has created a lot of success for me over the years and I've gotten better at it as I've gone along because I only do this. Lots of people are always trying to talk me into Bitcoin and Forex and futures and all this other things. I don't need anything else. I just add more size to what I'm doing now or take more trains and more different stock picks and that's how I'm making more over the years. So think about this like I said, tip of the day is to focus on one thing. Don't spread it out. If you feel the need to do that, you probably don't have a lot of conviction in any trade that you're doing. 
You really only need one thing to be successful. That is really key. You're gonna limit your losses, and then again, you're gonna get good at something. So for me, for gaps, what I focus on is this, particularly the first 30 minutes of the trading day. I'm capturing those moves, trying to get in as quick as I can. I can get in, get out fast. If I'm in a day trade or if I'm in an option, I can hold it for a bigger move. My system is based on stocks that are gapping. So stocks that gap in the morning have typically big moves. And for me, a clear directional bias, which I know when, way before the open. So I'm figuring everything out way before 9.30. Lots of day traders don't even figure out what they're doing until after 9.30 or even after 10 a.m. I have a preset and pre-planned what I know and what I like well before the open. Again, that helps to ease the stress of me and make it less stressful to train. I'm not trading on the fly. I'm not making decisions on the fly. Very often people don't do well with that as uh, too. I mean, people just don't do well risking money on the fly and nobody should be doing that. You should know I like this or I don't like that. I'm not trading today, there's nothing good or I am trading today, this is good. You know, that kind of mindset. But knowing what I wanna do before the open does give me an itch, okay? Again, it's the idea of becoming a specialist, becoming an expert, the focus on something. So again, let's review, what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. Well, how do you know what gaps to do? There's thousands of things that gap on any given solitary day. Well, I go through and I make a small watch list every single morning and I rate them. So I'm not rating 200 gaps in the morning. I pick and choose and make a small watch list and rate those to try to find the good ones. I might do one or two, preferably one, okay? You only need really one good trade in order to make money trading. Now, if you want to do several options, I think it's easier because of the fact that you don't have to monitor them so quickly in a one minute chart. But again, it's the idea of the quality, not the quantity, okay? You cannot short every down gap. You cannot go long every up gap. You can't short every up gap, you can't go long every down gap. Okay, it's not that simple. If it was that simple, then no one would ever lose. So how can you use this system to make money? You're going to focus on institutional money and focusing on the gap and getting running in the pre-market. If you learn the system, you have it all situated before you go, what you wanna do, targets, support, resistance, the gap rating, are you gonna go long, are you gonna go short, what are you gonna do? Okay, so I got up in the morning on Monday, saw the gap. We were down pretty early. <laughs> we were down like at 4 a.m., but I didn't get up to like 5.30. And we didn't really change much. I mean, we were down and we stayed down pretty much till the open. So here was where we closed, here was where we opened, and again, I rated the gap early in the morning. And I said, wow, this is not gonna reverse, which it could have. I said, this is a short, and then I knew we could go full throttle, shorting many things to get the market direction that day with it, or the help of the market, including the market. So this was what I call a power trend day. It's rare to have power trend days in the market up or down, but we did get that on Friday. Again, I don't count the way we closed the bounce into three because a lot of times you get reversals late in the day. Overall, we really did have a power trend day down to the downside in the market on Friday, I mean on Monday. So you can say all the reasons, again, Congress and this and that. The reality was the gap was real, okay? We saw selling and it was institutional selling that came in from Friday to Monday. Now, I'm going to go back to September 3rd. Well, I started having kind of a bearish bias on this market that we would have a drop. My expectation was we were for a little bit here now. I did a put, a, a, it was a cheap one, a buck 60 um, on September 3rd. So let's go back to that day here, September 3rd here. So I called a put here. It dropped, it worked. We did the 451s, boom, dropped, okay? So this was back then. This expired even before the drop from Monday to Friday, but this trade did drop into it. It was a return on investment of 81%. You could have taken one contract and risked $160. An advanced trader risk of 50 contracts, which is a risk of $8,000, made 6,500 profit. Again, Friday, you take the trade, get the momentum, get the drop. Here's the move. So market closed here, gap down. On this particular day, the day that I called it, the trade was actually down. Actually, this was right before Labor Day. I'm remembering this now. The trade was down into the close on this day, and then it fell, plop, okay? 
So my expectation was that I was going to get the momentum to the downside. That's why I did a put. I was right. But I was feeling this was starting to come around here. And then we really got the bomb here. Okay. So I'm, I predicted we drop. I like to do them pretty, pretty, pretty much within a week or two. But then, and then we had the bomb from Friday to Monday. Okay. So there's just huge opportunity when you can see where something's going to go based on the gap and the power of money. Okay. Very, very important. Now, how long will it take you to make money and learn this? It depends on you. I'm here to answer questions for people. My class is two full days on the weekend. It, you can learn it all in one weekend in the class. You can have questions after it. You, it might take you a couple of days or a couple of weeks to get the hang of it. I don't know. It depends on where you come from and if you listen to the things that I discuss. You know, I think a lot of people are, what's the word? Like they're, they're, they're more inclined, I guess, to continue to repeat the same mistakes over and over, patterns. People are stuck on patterns a lot, meaning patterns of behavior, not patterns in a chart, but patterns of behavior where they will repeat patterns of behavior, even if it means that they're losing money. I don't know why people do that, but if this sounds like you, you have to stop doing that. And it's really not something that, can, that has to take you a long time to do. You can do my class in a weekend and learn it in two days, and then you can start listening and getting the calls and doing it and making money. But I think people have a hard time giving up on patterns of behavior. And again, it, that's something that you have to let go of if you notice you're doing this. At the beginning, I talked about where are you at for 2021. If you're losing money in whatever you're doing this year, you should stop doing it. It doesn't make any sense to continue trading if you're losing money. I don't know why people do that, but God knows people do. People are down money in that stock in GME. They're still in it. They're long. They swear up and down it's going to go back to the highs. Who knows if it will? Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Low odds that it will at this point. So the reality is people just sometimes get so stubborn and stuck on things, you've got to change what you're doing if you're not making money. You really, really have to. Trading should not be based on gambling. It should be based on a specific system and a specific strategy that you do and you follow, follow, follow. So again, how do I find gaps? I get up in the morning and I rate them using a checklist. I scan for them. I make a small watch list and then I pick the good ones that I want to do. The checklist helps keep me regimented and disciplined and focused. And then I'm all over the place. Okay, sometimes people have the news on, they have CNBC on, Fox Business, and they're like, oh, this thing, that thing, whatever. You know, if you're if you're if you're making decisions based on not really one reason or system, again, I use technical analysis, technical analysis in the gap then you're gonna be all over the place with your results and all over the place with your trades, okay? And that's, that's tough on you financially and it's also tough on you emotionally and mentally because again, you never get the confidence and the conviction because you never have the right focus and the information. And the knowledge is what's gonna help you make the money. So how, do I, how am I able to predict something like Facebook? Because I've got the proper knowledge. It's not luck, it's not luck, okay? And he's getting back to institutional money, which is the crux and the meat and potatoes of what I do, looking for that in the gap. There is only one thing and one thing only that can move the direction of a stock or the market, and it's money. Not a little bit of money, but a lot of money. Okay, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of millions of shares. Again, I call it power money. Power money is in charge. Even if you think it's not, it is. Power money is in charge of the stock's direction. Trends are set and moved by the power of money people, of which there's a lot of in the market. And you know what? This is true for many, many things that go on in the world as well. The power of money people are in control. Even if you think they're not, they are. You know, we saw that <laughs> with what happened with COVID. Look at the companies that benefited from in 2020 from COVID. Seriously, look at some of the stocks that skyrocketed. Look at some of the the uh, companies that had massive, massive gains in a year when we were in such a downturn in the shutdown. So gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps. There's no play in them. And some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. So just think about it intellectually, like this makes sense. If you're with the power of money, if you're in the same direction 
as a hedge fund that just took a 100,000 100, share position in, in, in a stock, again, it could be long, it could be short, it's going to be really easy for you to, to make money because they're going to move the stock. Just think about it, okay? So the rating system I do, the system I use is a 26-point rating system. This pinpoints the direction of power money by reading the price. Again, I am predicting this before the open. I'm not predicting the gap itself. Like I said, cost goes out Thursday night. I don't know what it does. But I, after it gaps on Thursday night, I will rate that gap. And then I will determine if it's going to move up or if it's going to move down. Okay. But having conviction in a system is essential, essential for you to trade and make money. I had a lot of conviction in the market. In fact, when I called the short in the market on Monday, I said, no matter what, we're going to drop today. I said, I don't know exactly what time. I'm not sure exactly. I can't say exactly what time we're going to drop. But I said, we are going to drop today 100% conviction, 1,000% conviction. And that is exactly what we did. So we opened, rallying. Some people went long here. They got stopped out. We dropped and broke. And we did break pretty early, to be honest with you. I wasn't sure what time it would happen, but it was, oh, here it is. Here, I have the one minute. So here's what we did. This is a one minute chart. Here was Friday. <coughs> Closed here, gap down, rallied. People went long in here. They went long. We did not. We waited, waited, waited. Then we shorted. Pushed back, held, dropped. Got the drop, 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 drop. This pretty much sold off. Beautiful move. And again, you could have got out in the morning or you could have held it because I really like this to continue falling. I held this down on the day. This is an advanced trader risk of $2,600 per, per, per risk because we have the stop in. I'll show you a beginner trader risk in a minute with less quantity share size. This was a day trade on margin. Entry 368. Again, 2,000 shares, risk was 2,600, exit 361.50, beautiful exit, $13,000. This is a day trade. You would have needed margin to do this as an equity trade. If you do not have the buying power to take 2,000 shares of the Qs, you could have done a smaller amount, okay? You could have done 500 shares here. Risk was 650, and you still could have made $3,250. It was a huge call and a huge trade. That's a great trade. Now again, you could have taken less than this. You could have taken 200 shares. You could have taken 100 shares. We had a perfect, perfect, perfect entry on this and it dropped like a brick. We almost had a high of the day entry in this, short. While people were long, I'm gonna go back. So where, where people were long it, active traders, not institutional traders, we were short. So this is the difference between being an expert in something and being really good and focused on one thing or not. Again, what if this trade had lost? You would have lost either, you know, 650 bucks or $2,000 or whatever you had risked as far as the quantity of share size. It just would have been one loss. But if you're focused on it and you know what to do, you can make thousands of dollars even with a couple hundred shares. And here's the daily again to go back. Okay. I also called uh, two puts in this too, but at different strikes, but, but I just have the day trade in here to review, okay? Doing options is a cheaper way, and if you don't have a, a margin account, okay? Anyways, how did I figure out the cues were gonna fall? I rated the gap in the morning using a 26 point checklist. That's what you learned from me. That's how I have the conviction to make money, and you'll get conviction too. If you want to trade effectively and be consistent and make money, you cannot go with a crowd of day traders. Reddit's been around for years, but for some reason this year, Reddit's exploded with day trading chat rooms since the start of the year, and I discussed GME earlier. A lot of people are in those chat rooms are getting ideas from complete strangers. They don't know what they're doing. They have no meaning, no system, no strategy, no nothing, and they're risking their own hard-earned money to getting ideas. It's really not an advantageous or intelligent thing to do. Uh, Taking ideas from strangers based on nothing at all is not going to make you money. While you might get one in a blue moon where you get in a stock like GME and happen to get in it before it explodes, that is very, 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 very low odds that you would do that. And way more people lost money in that if you look at the chart than ever made money in it. And people are still long it now, like I said, and they're down. So you can't go with the crowd. Why? Because most day traders lose. I hate to say it, but that's the reality. Most retail traders, day traders, swing traders, and options traders lose in the market. Why? They're not focused and they're not good at what they do. And they want to just make a quick buck and they don't want to put the time and energy and effort into learning what to do. 
They don't want to put the time and money into understanding and educating themselves and get good at something. When I started trading, I thought I was going to figure out how to do this really quick by myself in three to six months. I was wrong. It took me three years to figure out my system. It was a very long road. I'm glad that I did it and I would never want to repeat that time in my life again, but I even underestimated how long it was going to take to figure this out. And so your benefit is you come to me and pay me for my time and information to learn my system in a weekend. But you may have a learning curve after that where you're learning stuff. But if you're taking the calls in the training room and getting the newsletters, it should help you to make money as you go along as you learn it for yourself. There's no substitute for you learning what to do. And there's no substitute for you having conviction. Most people lose. It's the way the game is set up. It's like a pyramid. Here's the pyramid, okay? With the rich people at the top, the smart people at the top, and the dummies at the bottom, and the poor people at the bottom. That's where it is. So decide where you want to be. You may not be at the top. You may not be a billionaire. But as closer to the top as you can get is the better off you're going to be. So you have to think intelligently and you have to think intellectually. I'm trying to explain a little bit about this today, what I'm, what I'm saying here. But think about what I'm saying. Uh, we did Boeing short. Love to short. Stock closed here, gap down, boom. This was right after the uh, Labor Day weekend. We shorted this. Here's the drop, okay? Boeing's been falling for a while. This was a day trade. This is a little pricey too. You could have done this as an option. We shorted it at 215.50. 1,300 shares is a risk of 27.95. Exit, boom, 213.62. This was a quick trade in and out. This continued to fall though, I will say. Profit was $2,444. This is a day trade, a trade on margin. You could have done an option in this. This was a gap down in Boeing that fell. Here is the one minute. Again, I'm taking the entries, the minutia on the one minute chart, and I'm looking for it, predicting the gap on the daily. Okay, so I break it down. So again, I could be an active trader in and out nimbly with targets and moves. Here's the close of the previous day. Here's the gap down. Open had a weird bar here, and then it broke. This was September 7th. You could have done this as an option. Again, a much cheaper way to do it than a, 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 a an equity trade, okay? But you can open up a prop account with as little as $2,500 and get 10 to one margin at uh, in, a, in a retail account. So you can do both, whatever works for you. Some people don't like options. I like to do both, but I like to do options to hold for bigger moves. And I like to do equity trades because I want to get out fast and nimbly. So either way, it's the whole system that I'm doing where I'm doing my gaps. So either way, my edge is I'm looking at the gap and I'm predicting before Boeing even drops like a brick or the market or anything, that it's going to go down before I short it or something's gonna go up before I go long it. So it's the edge for me is I'm making the prediction. Okay, that's the whole point. You can do options, you can do day trades, you can do swing trades, but again, someone mentioned swing trades earlier. I think the, the difficulty for people with swing trades is they have no exit strategy. They don't have any exit to get out when they're down and they have no exit to get out when they're up. And so it's, how do you make money then? You know what I mean? So you can use my system, the Golden Gap system to do options and day trade. Here was BYND. This was a good one. Closed here, gap down. This was September 3rd. Again, another short, another gap down. Again, this is a nice stock to trade, beautiful stock to trade. Now, this was a little more complex of a trade. I, I have this in here. I'm just going to briefly go over this. Uh, we did an ad in this. I really, I, I really thought this was going to fall. So this is an advanced concept, but we shorted it at 115.60. I added close to the price. Okay. Then I added again. Again, you see the price here, 60, 65, 63. I kept adding in it to kind of get more in to the to the train to get more size in it my average price ended up being 11586 okay and then we got a very nice drop here of $2 10,000 shares now again you don't have to take 10,000 shares you would have needed the buying power to do it but this is a way to come, when you really 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 love something and you like know that it's going to drop or you have the market with you, okay, which was the case with a lot of things on Monday, then you can do an ad. This is an advanced concept. It's kind of like doing two trades in one or three trades in one where you're taking the size. Again, this is an equity trade. You have to have margin to do this or you could have done an option. Here was the third. 
close to your gap down, fell like a brick. Rallied, get the drop, boom. This is a 15 minute. Okay, that's an advanced concept. I will call trades like that in the room. But again, that's a way to just squeeze out a little bit more profit from something when you know that it's gonna to go to a certain number. I felt like 114 was very realistic for this to go to. Uh, this continued a little bit more past that, but I really felt a high level of confidence in that number. And then we got the push back here, and then we did the ads, and then it dropped, broke the low, boom. Again, here was the previous area right in the morning at 114. So I felt like that was, you know, really 100% realistic that it would get there again on the day, which it did. Okay. Oh, here's the one minute. Here. <coughs> here's the one minute. Anyways, if you want to trade for a living, you have to have a good strategy. You have to have good money management. And I do think it's important to have a good mentor to follow because it makes it easier. You have somebody to ask questions to. I didn't have that. Again, I created my own system. I think it would have been easier for me if I did have someone to go to for help or questions. Um, for me, the time of the day is very important, specifically the morning. That's what I focus on. I live in Manhattan. I live in New York. I'm still here through all this mess and COVID. It's so interesting. It, uh, in New York City, is still like COVID March 2020. It's insane what they're doing to New York. They're just, just the leaders of New York are destroying the city. It's a shame. I've left and gone to other places uh, just for visits and things. Just recently, like I said, I was out of town last week or where COVID doesn't exist, it's nice, but I'm trying to stick it out. I love New York City, but I tell you, if I had to go anywhere and deal with all the crap that's going on in New York and work in an office, it would be miserable. So, I mean, depending on where you live, depending on what's going on with the rules and the structure where you live right now in the country, um, or even if you're in a different country other than the United States, you know, Australia's having a difficult time right now. It's so convenient to make money from home. It's so convenient to work from home. A lot of people's schedules have changed now and people do have more time to work from home and trade. And they're working from home with a regular job. You can trade on the side. Like I said, you just have to have that period between 9.30 and 10 a.m. in the morning to be free. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a strategy on gaps. You will learn it. Uh, you will learn the 26 points, the entries, the targets. Um, and what am I looking for? I'm looking for every single day a good gap that rates 20 points or more per my 26 point system. I trade it in the morning early and I try to get in and out fast to the day trades and I'm holding the options for a little bit more of a bigger move. I'm looking for a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, preferably. Big move, early confirmation of the bias between 9.30 and 10 a.m. I think that's important. And precise entries, you saw that in the one minute chart, with follow through and a good risk to reward because you need that risk to reward. Like I said, you have to have the winners pay you and then the winners cover the trades that don't work, okay? So I'm looking to make one to one. I do get trades sometimes though that make very high return on investments. It depends, it depends on the good ones. But on any given normal day, I'm just looking for one to one when I'm getting in. In other words, if you risk $500, you're looking to make 500 should be your expectation. If you're risking a thousand, your expectation be a thousand. While you can risk a thousand and make three thousand or more some trades, your expectation, your normal expectation in any given trade or day should be one to one. So if you come to me, you will learn the 26 points. That's the whole day Saturday of my class. Then on Sunday, I te teach six entries, which I do. You have to know them all and exits. I run a live trading room Monday through Friday, usually up between 10, 15, 10, 30. We open it. 8.30, but I don't start talking till 9. If you want a trading room trial just for this week, Thursday and Friday, you can email me at melissaatthestockswish.com if you want a free trial. You can come into the room and observe, okay? I do call the trade slide. The entry, the stop, the exit, all of it, okay? And it, it, the trade set up fast, we do them. The options are separate. The options are a newsletter, that's a newsletter subscription. It is not an options room, it is a day trade room. But there are people that are doing options in the room because they don't want to do the trades on margin, okay? The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on a very advanced level. And, you know, it's important on days like Monday. There were traders, like I said, that went long on Monday. It was the wrong thing to do. We had a huge day. But if you went long, you didn't have a good day, okay? And again, I'm going to be watching what happens here in about 13 minutes, 15 minutes here with the Fed meeting as far as the market direction. 
but my system teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power and charts. It teaches how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. You won't make money if you're in the wrong direction, that's for sure. It teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts, focusing on technical analysis and gaps. That is what I'm an expert on. That's all that I do is gaps. And I teach you how to get conviction in your trading in the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. While trading is fun, and I love reading charts, I like making money more than anything. And I think that's another benefit of trading with me. I'm extremely focused on making money, okay? Uh, so chunking it out means what? Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. Again, some trades are nice big trades, but ultimately you're just looking to take chunk it out on each and every day from the market. 200, 300, 500, 1,000, whatever it is. That's how you take a small account and you build it up. And then you build your account up and you can take more risk over time. It's not about risking the farm or putting all your eggs in one basket in your whole account in one trade. You still have to size yourself accordingly. It's just the focus of one specific trade at a time, one specific direction at a time, one specific stock at a time, okay? This allows you to get good at what you're doing, trade with a lot less stress, have 100% conviction in what you're doing and really be focused. So I think that the benefit of trading in today's day and age is definitely working from home, but you must empower yourself to do it, not get, you know, ideas from chat rooms and free webinars like this. I mean, you, you could short Facebook here from my idea this morning, but ultimately I just wanted to show you how I call the trade today that's working. You really have to understand what to do, and if you want the trial, you can come in, but I would watch and observe Thursday and Friday, even though I'm sure we'll have some nice calls. The class I'm doing is this weekend. Now, I only have a few more spots left. The deadline is Friday for this weekend's class. Uh, but I'm doing a special. If you can't make this weekend's class, you can sign up by Friday, pay by Friday, and do the class in October. The special I'm doing is if you sign up and take the Golden Gap course, you will receive the trading room and options newsletter free for one year. This is a huge deal because I normally charge for the trading room and the options newsletter separately. The special ends Friday, so you can sign up as long as you pay by Friday. You could do the class this weekend, September 25th and 26th, or October 9th and 10th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You want to do the October class, you can get in. You can start trading in the room and start doing the options newsletter and then do the class in October in two weeks. Okay, this is a really nice deal because you're going to get all my trade calls for one solid year. And obviously, you know, you follow along, you just do it, and you, and you should do well. You can ask me questions afterwards. I allow people to call me on the phone and email me. I'm a busy person, but I try to help people and do the best I can to help people and give them personalized service. I understand that learning sometimes is a learning curve, depends on your background. The class itself is a full two-day course on how to strategically find pick and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online, you can be anywhere in the world and take it. And again, if you want a trial for this week, Thursday and Friday is left for the week. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Any last minute questions here? I think I'm done a little bit early. A few minutes for questions. Done in time here to see the Fed movement. Any questions from anyone at all? Ajax, you were asking a bunch of questions. ITM options, I don't understand what ITM stands for. What does ITM stand for? I have no idea what that acronym means. In the money, what's your question? What's your question? If you're asking me where I call the options trains, it depends. It depends. If if I'm I'm not gonna call the 360 Facebooks today if the stock's opening at 345, if that's what you mean by in the money. That doesn't make any sense. So sometimes I call them at the strike, sometimes I call them away from the strike. But I'm not going to call something deep in the money if that's what you mean. That really doesn't make any sense because, again, we're trying to get momentum and movement 
I'm not, I don't want to give something, if I'm doing a trade on a Monday that expires on a Friday, I'm not doing it $20 or $10 into the money on something like Facebook that just makes no sense. If it's going to go in the right direction, it's going to make money. It's going to make money at the strike or far away. Why would I pay for somebody to be in the money that deep? That doesn't make any sense. There's no benefit to that. Trading options the way that I do it and the day trades and the options and everything I do is about momentum and making money. This isn't long-term investing. Again, if you're in that mindset of long-term investing, that is not... Uh, that is not income. That is you're planning for retirement. And if you're planning for retirement, I'd say, you know, you got some difficult decisions to make right now in the next six to 12 months or 24 months based on this market and the rate of inflation we're in and who's in the office in the White House. So, I mean, like, do you care about having consistent money coming in? Or you want to try to predict the next 24 months of what's where we're going to be with the market and the economy? Because that's super tough to do. Super tough to do. I mean, no one could have predicted COVID. That's number one. And number two, and I've said this before, I said this on Fox. I said this on Fox News in July. 50-50 chance we have another shutdown. So don't think we're going to keep rallying forever and making new highs every second. If you look at the backdrop of where we're at right now, Forget about the fall off of money. Just totally forget that for a second. Pretend that didn't even happen. The backdrop of the economy and everything that's happening right now is disastrous. Almost 11 million people on unemployment, and we have another number tomorrow. Who knows what that'll be? It's, you know, you, you just, to plan in the future depends on your time horizon and your age and where you're at with retirement. But, you know, I just said to my father um, a, a couple of weeks ago, I, I, you know, he actually asked me for advice. Um, he's in his 70s, uh, you know, he said, I'm thinking about selling out of my, uh, 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 some of my things. I said, you know what, let me look at it, I'll get back to you. And I said, yes, because, and then we fell. So I'm glad I told him to do it and he listened to me. You know, it depends where you're at, how close you are to retirement. But we're making money, we're active, we are taking profits week by week by week. Long term, you know, it depends how far you are from retirement, but I mean, you're in a tough spot right now if you don't have a long way to go. Like if you're not someone young like me, I mean, because we're, the economy is in the toilet as far as I'm concerned. And you know, anything could happen in the next two years. Don't think interest rates aren't gonna keep going up, and they could. And this, this uh, housing bubble is, is, a, is a danger too, because it's not gonna last forever. So that's my two cents on that. Listen, thanks for having me, everybody. Email me at melissathestockswitch.com if you want to trial this week. If you have questions about the class, if you want to sign up for the special, thank you for having me, David.